There is a significance to the lines that connect the various points on the Enneagram. Um, those are referred to as connecting points, and there is a specific relationship to the strategies at each of those points and the ones they connect with. And like I said in the other video about the strategies, we use all nine of the strategies in very specific ways, but we tend to use the one at our Enneagram point as our preferred strategy. So someone who is a type nine, for example, they striving to be peaceful, that's their preferred strategy, striving to feel peaceful. However, they connect to point three and to point six, and they use one as what I refer to as a support strategy, and another as a neglected strategy. Now, it's important to point out here that uh, we, in the Enneagram literature, it used to be thought that uh, you know we went to one connecting point under stressful or maladaptive times, and we went to another Enneagram point in or another connecting Enneagram point under healthier or uh, or more adaptive times. Most authors agree, most teachers agree now that it's more complicated than that. That we tend to go around to all the strategies under different circumstances, and there's a particular dynamic at those connecting points that we act out in both positive and or adaptive and negative or maladaptive ways. Okay? So we need to think about it in those terms. If you're a nine, you can do the 3.3 .3 in positive ways or negative ways sometimes, and you can also do the 0.6 strategy of striving to be secure in positive and negative ways. But one of the things I've noticed as a coach is that there is a particular set of circumstances that I think is important to understand and pay attention to regarding these connecting points. So even though the nine can go to three in positive ways or negative ways, when nine struggles, they tend to neglect the strategy at point three, which we call striving to be outstanding, to their own detriment. Okay, so we each have this strategy that under the right circumstances, we get into trouble for, for neglecting. Okay? So we neglect the strategy, and therefore we call it, or I call it, the, the, that connecting point, the neglected strategy. We go the other direction in ways that help us support our preferred strategy. So if we stick with the nine, they go to point six, striving to be secure, in ways that both, that supports their ability to feel more peaceful. Okay? So whenever we look at these Enneagram types, we have to think of them in terms of a dynamic, uh, not just of their own preferred strategy, but those connecting points. What's happening when a nine goes to three or a nine goes to six and uses those strategies? There's a real benefit to understanding the connecting points uh, on the Enneagram diagram. And mainly that benefit is how do we grow? How can we grow more effectively? Okay, we have to understand that we have this preferred strategy, this one that we get into trouble because we tend to overuse it, right? We use it too much, we rely on it too much. So part of the work is in learning to better integrate, better use, more adaptively use that preferred strategy. But then when we think about the connecting points, we want to understand our relationship with those connecting points as well and how that shapes our effectiveness in the world or our interactions with the world. Now, as we've said, we kind of use those strategies at the connecting points in both positive and not so positive ways. But I have noticed in my years of uh, working with people as a coach that there tends to be a very specific dynamic that happens that can get in the way. When we go to one connecting point, which we call the support strategy, we tend to use it in ways that reinforce our preferred strategy. So I, as an eight, will tend to go to point five, striving to be detached, in ways that support my strategy of striving to be powerful. I'll withdraw, I'll become more um, introverted, more introspective, as a way of feeling more powerful. Now, the connecting point at the other end is the two, striving to be connected. What eights will do, and what we'll all do, is we'll tend to neglect that strategy in specific ways because there's an internal logic to it that just doesn't make any sense to us. Okay? This is one of the beauties of the Enneagram is that it's set up on an internal logic where there are these relationships of the connecting points that it's useful to understand. So if I know that I tend to neglect my one connecting point, the one we call the neglected strategy, 
then that's a reminder for me to focus on integrating that strategy in more adaptive ways rather than avoiding it at times when I should use it. So let's look at each of the nine uh, enneotypes and their relationship to the connecting points. Okay, we'll start at the top of the diagram with point nine, striving to be peaceful. So for nines, their preferred strategy is striving to be peaceful. The strategy that they neglect is at point three, striving to be outstanding. Now again, this doesn't mean that nines can't be outstanding. It doesn't mean they can't be ambitious and assertive and successful in life. But they have this fear that they're going to be seen as attention-seeking. So they tend to neglect striving to be outstanding at very particular times when it would be useful for them to use it. They use the point six, the strategy of striving to be secure, as a way of supporting their striving to be peaceful. Okay? So they start to look for dangers in their environment and find ways to either ignore them or make them go away so that they can feel more peaceful inside. At point one, the preferred strategy is striving to be perfect. Ones tend to neglect the strategy of striving to be excited at very particular times. Now again, this doesn't mean that ones can't have fun, it doesn't mean that they can't get excited about things, but at very particular times they can neglect that strategy because they don't trust it. If I become too excited, I'm going to start to lose control, I'll be irresponsible, and that's one of the big things that ones are afraid of. So ones can get into trouble by uh, neglecting striving to be perfect, I'm sorry, striving to be excited, and therefore they have to learn to integrate that in ways that make it less threatening to them. Now the support strategy for the one is at point four, striving to be unique. And what you'll see in ones is that when they need reinforcement of their striving to be perfect, they'll very often fall into sort of the melancholic uh, sense of isolation that fours have. They'll feel like they're the only ones who are standing up uh, for what is right. So you'll see this real connection to striving to be unique for the ones. At point two, we have striving to be connected. So people who use this as their preferred strategy are what we call any type twos. Twos have a specific relationship with points four and point eight on the diagram. Point four is what's called their neglected strategy. Now, if you're striving to be connected, the strategy of striving to be unique can be a little bit threatening. It can seem to be counterproductive, so twos can be uncomfortable with that at times. Now, this doesn't mean that twos can't be creative and artistic, like the qualities that we usually associate with the type four. Certainly, many of them are and can be. But there's this little concern about being too unique. If I'm too unique, I'll be isolated. I won't be able to connect with people. So you'll see twos start to develop an uncomfortable relationship with that strategy. Now, going the other direction, the support strategy at point eight, the striving to be powerful strategy can really help them connect to other people by making them more assertive, by making them more, um, uh, more willing to engage with people, and at times to be you know, fairly aggressive and sometimes angry when their needs for connection are not being met. At point three, we have the preferred strategy of striving to be outstanding. Now threes, they have a particular relationship with point six and with point nine on the diagram. At point six, they have the neglected strategy, the striving to be secure. Now, this doesn't mean that threes you know, take needless risks or uh, put themselves in danger. That's not really what we're talking about here. But what sixes are good at doing is blending in with the group and finding security within the group. Threes look over that strategy and they say, I don't want to blend in with the group, I want to stand out. I want to be an exemplary member of the group. And so they become uncomfortable with that sort of blending in uh, characteristic that the six can have. Going the other direction, they can fall back on overusing, striving to be peaceful as a support strategy, a way of helping them seem even more outstanding. And they can seem like they have it all together, even within, when inside they don't. They might feel overwhelmed, but on the surface, they have this calm demeanor, kind of like the duck swimming on the pond. On the surface, everything seems calm and cool and collected, but underneath, the feet are going a million miles an hour in order to try to keep up. At point four, we have striving to be unique. The preferred somebody for striving to be unique, call it four. They have a neglected strategy at point one, striving to be perfect. 
Again, it doesn't mean that they're not striving to be perfect. And in fact, many fours can be very demanding and very perfectionistic around certain things. But they have this fear of having these expectations of perfection being put on them. Fear of being repressed. If I'm perfect, I'm going to be boring, I'm going to be mundane, I'm going to be just like everybody else. And that goes against this desire, or this felt need to be unique. Okay? So they have this neglected uh, approach toward striving to be perfect. Going the other direction, they connect to point two, striving to be connected as the um, support strategy. So in order to reinforce their uniqueness, they connect with other people who make them feel different, who make them feel unique, who make them feel special. Okay? So they rely on striving to be connected, striving to feel connected as a way to reinforce their striving to feel unique. At point five, you have striving to be detached. Okay? Again, the, the five is seeking to keep some sort of a little bit of a cushion between themselves and the world around them so they can be uncomfortable with the strategy of striving to be powerful. And this doesn't mean that fives can't be very powerful people. I know many very successful fives and there are certainly examples of fives in, in the world who are very powerful people, very influential people. But they have this reluctance to put themselves out into the world in sort of a visceral way because they're worried about being uncontrolled. If I let go, if I strive to be sort of personally powerful, I'll lose my detachment. It will get messy. I'll lose control. Okay? Going the other direction, striving to be excited is the support strategy. What fives will do in order to help them feel a bit more attached is to get very excited about intellectual things, to get very excited about cerebral things or abstract things so that they can kind of follow their, their interests into a way that helps them to, to maintain that feeling of detachment from the world. At point six, we have striving to be secure. Sixes tend to neglect the strategy at point nine, striving to be peaceful. Now again, this doesn't mean that sixes can't be peaceful at times. It doesn't mean that they can't relax. But they also don't trust the strategy of relaxing and being peaceful for too long because if they're too long, they can be too passive and they can miss out on some of the threats that might be coming their way. Okay? So the six has a tendency to um, neglect striving to be peaceful at times when they really should relax a little bit and be calm. They tend not to do it because they don't trust the strategy. They fall back on striving to be outstanding as their support strategy. It's kind of like they're proving their worth. If I, am, uh, if I show that I can achieve things and accomplish things, the group will accept me. I'll be uh, maintained as part of the group and not thrown out of my own where I'll be more vulnerable. Point seven, we have striving to be excited. The neglected strategy for the seven is at point five, striving to be detached. Sevens, they you know, if you're striving to be excited, you don't want to miss out on anything. Okay? So you don't want to withdraw too much. You want to make sure that you're sort of in the mix of things at the right time. So there's times when the seven should take some time to themselves or they should step back, they should withdraw and detach a little bit, and they neglect to do so because they might miss out on something. The support strategy for them is found at point one, striving to be perfect. Now, again, the seven goes about this in a different way than the one does, but they can take this sort of perfectionistic quality because the seven wants people to think that they're doing the right thing. They call it the acceptable face, where they're you know, making sure that they're doing all the things that they have to do so that they can then go and do the things that they want to do. Finally, we have point eight, striving to be powerful. The five, I'm sorry, the eight has a tendency to fall back on uh, Point five, striving to be detached as a support strategy. And what happens here is when the eight is starting to not feel as powerful as they wish they were, they withdraw. They sort of go back into their lair and regroup a little bit. Yeah, I call it distant regrouping. And the support, I'm sorry, the neglected strategy, the one that they don't do at particular times when they should, is at point two, the striving to be connected. Now again, it doesn't mean that eights can't connect to people. They're often very good at it. But at times when they really should be more sensitive, when they really should be more attuned to other people, they don't do it because they're afraid of being vulnerable. If you're too connected to people, you have a vulnerability that you wouldn't have otherwise if you're stepping back and being powerful and detached. So it's really helpful to understand the dynamics that are going on here, not to kind of 
be too short-sighted in the complex ways that we use all nine of the strategies, but to identify very specific developmental opportunities. We can each look at our neglected strategy and find ways to integrate it so that we can be more well-rounded and find ways to make sure that we're using the support strategy in appropriate and adaptive ways rather than in ways that just sort of reinforce our old you know, habitual patterns.